got into the special effects industry, uh, I guess professionally, probably about 17, 18. That's when I got my first professional gig. But I'd always really been interested uh, in the, the uh, craft ever since a little kid. You know, I earliest rem uh, memories I have is I go into the theater with. Uh, uh, to the drive-in with my parents seeing Jaws and, you know, American Werewolf in London and projects like that, you know, so I've always had a great fascination for the craft of, you know, taking these actors and actresses and turning them into these horrible creatures, you know. Uh, I, I, I've i always um, been interested in horror, sci-fi, uh, so it's one of those situations uh, I really didn't have a lot of friends growing up, you know, so I had a lot of time to watch monster movies and spend a lot of time sculpting, reading books, you know. Uh, I got into this biz way before YouTube and all these uh, online introductory, uh, 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 you know, programs and, and all this stuff. So, I mean, I'm 100% purely self-taught. So, um, and the, the hacks that come about right here. So, what I'd like to do, I then let's go ahead... Now that you got this height adjusted, uh, I'm going to do a signal. Two mm, cameras on. We will. That's fine. Uh, we'll see what else we have. We can get a probably closer. Okay. So while they're getting that shot. Okay. Excuse me. Okay. So then, in the meantime, you want to get that shot. Yeah, let's get this shot of him uh, turning around. Yes. Yeah. All we're doing in this shot is yeah. basically establishing his position yeah. and establishing frame. Yeah. You know what I mean for the effect? Can I get an apple box, please, Daniel? You know, I learned just by uh, mixing up plaster, pouring it on my brother's heads and stuff growing up, and uh, finally figured out the right uh, methods of doing things. <laughs> You know, it's, it's really hard for me to pinpoint uh, my favorite things that I've created, uh, considering I usually when I get involved in a project, I try not to do it unless it's something that I have an interest in, you know? So pretty much everything I've created, uh, I, there's some elements to it that, uh, you know, that made me want to do it in the first place, you know? So, so I, I pretty much like everything that I've, you know, created, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, things with a little bit bigger budgets just because we can get better materials, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, I do get disappointed sometimes when, uh, you know, we, we, we're working on stuff that's so low budget that we just can't quite afford the materials to make it the best, but I always make it the best with what I got to work with. So at the end of the day, uh, I, I'm usually pretty proud of something before I turn it in, you know? You, you know, he actually hit me up online, uh, said he was a big fan of my work. Uh, uh, we had a couple conversations about the, the project, and I really love the subject matter. I'm a huge uh, fan of, like, the Grindhouse films, uh, the 80s-style horror slasher uh stuff and uh, it was just really over the top the gags that he wanted <laughs> yeah it was just something that you know in his personality he has such passion for the project mm -hmm. and to me that's key you know it's it's really hard to uh, put you know 110 percent of passion into a project where the keys on the project don't have that same love for what we're doing you know, so I, I knew right off the bat, Jason, you know, had a great feel and a great vision for what he wanted to accomplish. What we're creating for this film, uh, we actually have quite a, a, a bit on our workload. Uh, we got some really intense uh, gags that we got going on. A, a lot of, uh, it, it's, it's, it's some gore, but it, it's creative gore. One of the effects that we're doing is we have to remove a unborn fetus in a parking lot. Uh, so we have one of our sculptors working on a full pregnant belly that uh, is going to be cast out of ballistics gel, where we uh, actually remove a uh, prop fetus and she gets strangled with the umbilical cord. Uh, we got that sequence. Uh, got this really great sequence where a guy in a movie theater gets stabbed in the back of the head. Uh, 
there, there's, you know, uh, a lot of, of, of real, like, violent, quick clips, you know, but it's all very, uh, still very surreal uh, about the way that it's shot, considering most of these are, are not actually happening. These are, in the film, it's, it's a lot of uh, almost, you know, kind of, slightly uh, dream fantasy type sequences, visions that this character is having in his head. So that, uh, s since that is the element that really uh, uh, gives us room to kind of push the envelope on the, the kind of line between reality and, uh, you know, fiction. Actually, one of my favorite sequences that we got is uh, we had actor Larry Butler come down. He was in uh, Clive Barker's Lord of Illusions, and he's been in like a hundred of films. Uh, the, the guy's a, a great old school actor. Uh, he actually came down. We did a face cast of the, the actor for a drowning sequence that we have in a bathroom. Uh, the sequence is it's really cool because what we're trying to do is give the audience this very uncomfortable uh, feeling so what what we did was we actually had the actor come down uh, for a face cast that we're gonna uh, create a rubber face uh, exactly like him to hide the snorkel units for this drowning sequence so when the guy is puking and vomiting in the bag you know he can actually breathe so we can get like a full like minute and a half uncut shot from Face to bag filling up to drowning, struggling, all within the time frame of where no one can hold their breath. So it's going to give the audience a very uncomfortable feeling like, okay, when is this going to cut? When is this going to cut? And it just doesn't cut. And the guy is struggling and eventually deceases. One of the main uh, uh, props we're doing for the film is we're doing this really cool, like, fleshy, organic script the lead character, Harris, uh, uh, ends up getting removed from his abdomen uh, for a sequence. So we're doing a uh, ballistics gel chest that can split open and remove this fleshy, organic, uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, part of him, you know? Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be pretty wild.